Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Coming up tonight on Our News, the family of a Marine killed by police wants to see body cam footage of the incident. Long lines and long waits as government expands free COVID testing. Possible changes to gathering protocols as officials confirm Omicron's presence in the Bahamas. And parents speak out on virtual learning challenges. Welcome to Our News and thank you for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Topping news tonight, the family of Royal Bahamas Defense Force Marine Rodney Adderley wants to see the body cam footage of the police-involved shooting that claimed the young man's life on Monday. National Security Minister Wayne Monroe says he has seen the footage and says it is consistent with the officer's claim that Adderley charged at the police officer. Monroe also told reporters today that the Marine appeared to have been dealing with some issues. The information is that he, was, he wouldn't have been armed. Have you seen the body cam I, footage? I have it. And you have it? Yes. Does it match up with the police statement? Yes, it's consistent with the police's account. Monroe confirming that RBDF leading seaman Rodney Adley was not armed early Monday morning when he was shot and killed by police. According to the police report, officers were called to a vacant lot near Dunmore Avenue following a complaint about a suspicious vehicle. When officers ordered Adley to exit the vehicle, he reportedly charged at one of them and attempted to disarm him, prompting the officer to shoot him after being in fear for his life. Monroe said this account matches what he saw in the video, which will be made public during the coroner's inquest. When the matter comes out, the same people who seek to vilify the police, there are going to be issues around the mental challenges to the, the Marine in question. The question was asked, why would you rush out an armed police officer? Well, the public must understand that our heroes are human beings just like us. They're afflicted with the things that may afflict us. And so just be very careful when we come to assess people and why they do what they did. Adderley's family spent most of the day seeking to view that video. A relative we spoke with said the family wishes to see it, if only for some clarity. The National Security Minister saying this incident has multiple layers, as the Marine appears to have been dealing with a few issues. So a part of the introspection will be um, how we dealt with the Marine in question. There were a lot of welfare and social matters extended to him. Was it enough? Things like this are going to occupy discussions with the, with the Royal Bahamas Defense Force so that we can be very sure that we're taking the best care of the members of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. A joint investigation by the police force and the defense force is underway. In a statement, the RBDF described Adderley as a dedicated and committed individual and a decorated Marine. The corporal involved in the shooting will have to receive the same sort of counseling and um, support because taking another person's life is a traumatic event. I implore the public to stop sensationalizing these matters. The family of Azario Major, who was shot and killed by police over the Christmas holiday, is still seeking answers. However, Monroe insisted there is no reason for the public to not trust the police. It disrespects the police when you say to people who you say they must put their lives on the line for you, that you're not prepared to extend to them the same thing you extend to people who are charged with crimes before the courts. The police will investigate. You give them all the material. If wrongdoing is found, regardless of who is the wrongdoer, they end up before the courts. In other news, three days after the Davis administration rolled out free COVID-19 testing on your Providence, hundreds of people lined up outside the two testing sites this morning to find out their COVID status. Some people left feeling frustrated while others applauded the government initiative. Bertha McDermott has more. There were long lines and sometimes long waits at newly opened rapid antigen testing centers on New Providence today as the government expanded access to free COVID testing. Here at Malaya, some people left frustrated after waiting a long line to get tested. They said we were supposed to start at 9 and it took a whole hour for them to set up and then it was really confusing as to where it went. But once they got everything sorted of in and done. It was smooth up until it started. Earlier we had to wait and it was like nobody knew what was happening. How long did you wait? I was here from like 8.20. Uh, well, it wasn't good. I was here from 8.50 and nobody was here. And they set up around 9.30 and I, my appointment was for 9 o'clock. With the country recording 3,000 more cases in one week and over 800 cases in one day, Prime Minister Philip Davis announced on Sunday that the government will make 1,000 free tests available each day. 
This morning, the line of cars stretched far beyond this drive through testing center on West Bay Street. Residents had mixed views on the process. No, apparently no one knew where it was supposed to be exactly. Did they say anything as to why it took so long? Oh no, definitely no. not. Now, while this was the sentiment shared by those who showed up to the Malaya Resort looking to get a free COVID-19 test this morning, those who went to the Kendall Jill Isaacs Gymnasium shared a different view. They said the process was without hiccups. It's fairly easy, in and out, takes less than five minutes. They check you in, you sanitize, they call you in the available, swap you and that's it. Oh, smooth, really smooth. Free testing was a promise made by the Progressive Liberal Party on the campaign trail. Over at Kendall Jill Isaacs Gym, people walked in to get tested for COVID-19 and also received free KN95 masks. Wonderful, because some people only just make $50 a day and if they charge them $40 for a test, this was excellent. Well, it's good because most of these jobs are not requiring you to pay for the testing yourself. So it's better to be, um, you know, doing it for free, whereas sure. people could come in and get it for free. Reporting for our news, I'm Bertha e. McDermott. Health Minister Dr. Michael Darber revealing that tighter restrictions for gathering could be on the way as health officials review protocols with an aim to making some changes. On Friday, the country confirmed a single day record with over 800 cases. Cabinet discussed the matter today. What we are concerned about, like every country in the world, when we begin to see signs of exponential growth uh, spread, uh, we have to look at the protocols uh, as it relates to people coming close to proximity to one another and uh, make some adjustments. We intend to do so. But we are watching the numbers, but uh, that 800 plus number, I think, was on Friday. And uh, that is of great concern to us. Some of the discussions will be taking place today in Cabinet. COVID hospitalizations also making a steep climb to 110 cases over the weekend. Based on the rapid rise in cases in recent weeks, health officials had suspected the highly transmissible Omicron variant had spread to the Bahamas. And Darwell said information from the National Reference Lab has confirmed this. We are still testing and sending samples abroad uh, to make sure that uh, what we're seeing is absolutely correct. And we have been confirming that the majority of cases in the Bahamas is the Omicron variant. So we have that so, confirmed? Well, through uh, our reference lab, uh, they do uh, some preliminary testings and they are confident that it is here while we await the final confirmation from Panama. According to Darville, the 50 nurses recruited from Cuba are expected to arrive in the country this week. It comes at a time when over 150 healthcare workers are in either quarantine or isolation. This morning we had a number of somewhere between 160 to 180, I can confirm. And with that being said, you know we placed the new protocols in and so probably today some additional ones will come back into service. And I'm looking forward uh, for the new 50 nurses from Cuba to be a part of the system to help us. Well, parents are speaking out on some of the challenges their children are facing accessing virtual lessons. They were candid with education officials who visited the Freetown community today in an attempt to address gaps in online learning. Sharika Johnson reports. Parents said they've faced difficulties the last two years as they've monitored their children on the virtual platform. From unstable internet connections to tablets not working. They're hoping for the better. 41-year-old Stacia Cartwright is unemployed and has to juggle daily life while helping her children with online learning. Days like today, she is stressed because the internet was disconnected. At this point, the mother is eager for schools to resume face-to-face -face learning. They're going in and out sometimes along with the weather and whatever. These are the children Minister of Education Glennis Hannah Martin wants to reach. She joined teachers and other staff of Uriah Maffey Primary School for a community walkabout today to find out why many students aren't participating in virtual lessons. There are children who have not been online for two years and they're out there. And they're out there nationwide. And they're out there in this community. And we need to go out there today, raise awareness to this community and to the nation that we are going to go out there and fight for our children. We're going to find them. We're going to bring them in. We're going to give them an opportunity in this life. We're going to do it. The COVID-19 pandemic has kept students out of the classroom for months and in some cases over a year. It doesn't help that some of them have had challenges accessing the virtual learning platform. Back in October, Director of Education Marcellus Taylor revealed that only 70% of students were attending online classes. 43-year-old Michelle Adelie says her children have missed online classes and really need tablets. Today, she registered with the school to access the new devices. Sometimes I get on, sometimes I don't get on. 
and I feel it was a problem because I want my children to be on t- on time with their schoolwork. And then the tablet now wasn't working. Following a tour of public schools across New Providence, Prime Minister Philip Davis said the government is aiming to reopen schools this month. In the meantime, Freetown Member of Parliament Wayne Monroe urged parents to do all they can to ensure their children attend online classes. It behooves us to start being a generation of complainers. Get with it, access the opportunities that are available to you, sacrifice where sacrifices are necessary, maybe one less bear. Maybe one less club outing, maybe one less hair job, nail job, sacrifice to get it done for your children. Reporting for Our News, I'm Sharika Johnson. Well, scattered thunderstorms expected tonight. Meteorologist Greg Thompson has our first look at weather. Thanks, Kyle, and welcome everybody for your first look at weather tonight on this Tuesday evening. Breezy conditions and partly cloudy skies outside our studios right now. Temperatures into the low 70s, 72 and those feels like temperature at 70, northeast winds at 13 miles per hour. Satellite view, that front boundary that pushed into the northwest Palmas overnight, now to the south of the capital, showers and thunderstorms associated with that boundary continuing to affect portions of the Bahamas. We even have some showers out ahead of that across the southeast Palmas. We will continue to see one or two more showers tonight through tomorrow. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come, could a COVID spike on some family islands result in tougher restrictions for inter-island travel? And the legal year opens tomorrow. How the fourth wave has impacted this year's ceremony. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 there. remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. You're watching Our News. Welcome back. Prime Minister Philip Davis responding to questions about the need for tougher restrictions for inter-island travel as some family islands see a spike in COVID-19 cases. Berthony McDermott has that. Amid an increase in COVID-19 cases on some islands, Prime Minister Philip Davis could not say whether government intends to impose restrictions on domestic travel to reduce the spread of the virus. Grand Bahama, Abaco, Exuma and Inagua are among the islands that have seen a spike in cases in recent days. Davis said part of the challenge the Bahamas faces as an archipelago is the virus is appearing in each community at different scales. Depending on which island you're coming from and going to will dictate what what necessary measures have to be put in place. And so it is very difficult to answer that question in a, in a way <laughs> that will be with any degree of certainty. All we can say is that measures that we put in place for inter-island travel will depend on the risks involved from each from one, one island to the next. On Friday, the country confirmed a terrifying single-day record, 818 new cases in one day. 734 of those cases were on New Providence. That was followed by 291 cases on Saturday and 349 cases on Sunday. Hospitalizations have returned to triple digits. Opposition leader Michael Pintard called it responsible for the Prime Minister to disregard measures that he said could be useful in the future and suggested the government isn't doing enough. Let them tell me. What else we should be doing? Because uh, public education is starting. Very good. We have giving a free mask. Mm-hmm. We have yes. free testing. Mm-hmm. Right? We have stre- strengthened restrictions coming into our borders. What else would they want to? We have, we have engaged more doctors. We have engaged more nurses. What else? What they want us to do. Davis also accused the former government of leaving the country in a sad state. Short of resources, not enough medication in place. We are now ordering, we have ordered medication to treat the COVID. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. In less than 24 hours, the new legal year begins, but it's going to look a lot different than the outdoor ceremony that was initially planned. Due to the recent surge in COVID-19 cases, the event will now be held virtually. Still, Chief Justice Sir Brian Maureen QC says the next year will be all about executing plans that have been in years have been years in the making. Here's Jason Brown. 
Chief Justice O'Brien Marie explaining his goals for 2022 will be about execution. We now must execute. The planning has been done. A lot of the, a lot of the back office work has been done. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of meetings. Um, it's now all about execution and implementation. And according to the Chief Justice, there is a lot to be implemented. We have been working behind the scenes on many projects now for the better part of two years. We are getting to the point where these projects are going to be rolled out. During his speech at the opening of the legal year in 2021, Sir Brian outlined his plan to bring sweeping changes across the judiciary, including overhauling the problematic juvenile court system, introducing alternative sentencing in the magistrate's court, and initiating a program to reduce the decades-long backlog. The CJ summed up his plan in two words, reform and modernization. But this year, he says other projects will get special focus. We have to implement our case management system. We have to complete our digitization project. We have to launch our e-filing portal. Uh, we've already launched CAPS, the Court Automated Payment System in the Magistrates Court, but that needs a little bit more work in order to get the level of utilization that we need. Um, so we're going to be doing more work on, on, on integrating CAPS into the delivery of our services in our, in our Magistrates Family Court. Um, we, 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 we have a, another major project, which is very important. It's the digital court reporting system. Now, the Chief Justice is expected to address that and much more when he delivers his remarks at tomorrow's opening of the legal year. The ceremony will now be conducted virtually and will be broadcast on RTV and social media platforms. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Still to come, additional safety measures to be implemented at the House of Assembly. And Bahamian hoop stars hit the hardwood. The details when our news returns. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. This is our news. Welcome back. Parliamentarians will return to the House of Assembly tomorrow amid a record rise in COVID-19 cases. House Speaker Patricia DeVos says though tomorrow's session will be brief, a limited number of MPs will be allowed in the chamber at a time. Once we enter the upper chamber tomorrow, as you can see here, um, we have chairs affixed and there's five at the front and there's five at the back and on the, this is the governing side and that's the opposition's table and we have five at the front and then the governing side would resume the five at the back. And they're right over here, Kyle. We have first come, first serve. So anybody from whether it's the opposition or the governing side can get these seats over here. And it's three to the front, three to the middle table, and two at the back. Devo added that by January 26, face recognition machines will be placed in the House of Assembly and the Senate to scan the temperatures of people entering the buildings and match the recordings with their faces. If necessary, she said, bi-monthly rapid antigen testing will be arranged for all members of Parliament. However, if numbers continue to grow at such an alarming rate, PCR testing will be considered. We're going to put a facial recognition monitoring machine where all the members will be monitored so that we can know what our status is as we relate to this. And we are going to have talks also with Bay Street Medical so that every month, if need be, Kyle, that they can come in and they can be checked by antigen tests. And if need be, as these numbers grow, we will proceed to PCR testing. Buddy Heal and the Kings falling short at home as Clay Thompson gets back in action. Marcellus Hall has more in sports. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. Buddy Heal and his uh, Sacramento Kings, they were in action again last night. Buddy's been having a pretty good start to the year. Some good point percentages and his shooting has also gone up as far from the three point range and they were hoping for a win last night. Let's see exactly if they were able to pull it off. Buddy Hill, Sacramento Kings at home taking on the Cleveland Cavaliers. Kings trying to get a win on their home court. Unfortunately, they would come up just a bit short in this one as they go down 109 to 108. Cleveland comes into town and steals the win. How about our guy Buddy Hill? Taking a look at his numbers, he played 27 minutes, finished up with 19 points, three rebounds, three steals on the course of the ball game. Also had a couple of assists in this one and a block. Fulfilling out the stat sheet, 
As I said, however, they do get the loss. Looking ahead at the next game, Sacramento now will be back in action. They're going to be playing again on Wednesday when they take on the L.A. Lakers. That game will also take place in Sacramento. Meanwhile, son of the saw, Clay Thompson, back after a long break due to injury. Missing the last two seasons is our guy, Clay Thompson, the son of NBA legend Michael Sweetbells Thompson. And now Clay getting the start, playing very well in this one. After missing so much time, Klay Thompson, 17 points in the game. Warriors get an easy win, 96-82. to That ends up being the final score. Good to see Klay out there on the floor as he even has a dunk to finish things off to show that he's indeed back into full form. You expect him to get better as the season progresses. Meanwhile, the college football national championship game taking place last night. Number three, Georgia going up against number one, Alabama. Crimson Tide. And I tell you what, roll tide not getting it done last night. 33-18, Georgia Avengers, a regular season loss. The steal a win from Alabama. Georgia Bulldogs, they snap a 41-year title drought as they get the victory once again. Good job there for Georgia. The celebration beginning down there in the state as they celebrate a huge victory over the highly touted Alabama Crimson Tide. And there it is. You look at sports for you here on this Tuesday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you. Up next, Greg is back with a look ahead at the week in weather. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our health care facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Welcome back to our news. Rainy days ahead. Greg is back with our extended weather forecast. Thanks again, Kyle, and welcome back, everybody, for a second look at our weather. That frontal boundary that pushed through the northwest Bahamas now just to the south of the capital across the central Bahamas. Showers and thunderstorms associated with that system continuing to affect the area, and we will continue to experience a few more of those showers later on tonight through tomorrow as that frontal boundary hangs out across the area. We expect it to lift back towards north eventually, but by Thursday, we expect another more significant push of cooler air mass and a frontal boundary into our area. So we will see a change in our weather coming latter part of the week and into the weekend. And then again, we expect another frontal boundary by Monday. So a series of fronts expected to move through the capital and the Bahamas over the next couple of days. So we're looking like winter is here for the first part of the year. Boating forecast, very rough out there for all you boaters out there. The Northwest Bahamas small craft advisory posted those winds will be 15 to 20 knots, but up to 25 knots across the extreme northern islands. Very rough seas, four to six, but up to nine feet in some swells. Your low tide will be at 9, 12 tonight for the central and southeastern islands. A caution flag posted for you guys down there, all due to the swells as well. East to southeast winds, 10 to 15 knots, seas two to four feet near shore, but they will be up to seven feet offshore in some moderate swells. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look now at your extended forecast through Tuesday. Hazardous beaching and boating weather for the next couple of days, but do stay safe. Back to you, Kyle. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Have a good evening and be safe, Bahamas.